Mississippi State so far on this drive. And it brings up a third down and eight for Alabama. Mississippi State, this has been kind of what's happened to them all season. They'll play in spurts defensively really well and then give up big plays. They got a good opportunity here on third and long to get a stop. And try to get off the field and force an Alabama punt. O.J. Howard, the tight end, the big freshman, rumbles out. As a wide out to the left. Bulldogs thinking about a blitz. McCarron steps up in the pocket and throws on a crossing route. Jones heading to the stick, and he got there. First down by a foot. So Christian Jones takes it. Nine yards on a third down and eight, and Alabama keeps the drive alive. Well, it was a zone blitz. It wasn't man coverage, but A.J. McCarron's going to pick up the crossing route coming right in front of his face. He feels the pressure to his left. Yeldon is there. Does a nice job of sliding up in the pocket and finding the underneath route for the first down. So the seventh play of the Alabama drive coming up at the Bulldogs' 34-yard line. Play action down here. There it is. McCarron. And now pressured him down he goes, and he doesn't get sacked very often. He's been sacked once in about the last half a season. Yep. And Chris Jones is the guy that got there. See, this is a big physical front seven that Mississippi State has, and they match up better against Alabama's offense and the way they like to play and A.J. McCarron than they did last week in College Station against Johnny Manziel. And they get a sack on the first possession. Second sack allowed, ledge in the last 128 pass attempts. That's pretty good protection. But it brings up second down and long. And McCarron back in the shotgun. And whistle before the play. I think Mississippi State might have taken a timeout. First charge timeout. I don't think they had enough guys on the field. I think they only had 10 on the field. They had to call timeout. That's not good. On the 25-yard line, they've worked it to the 41 of Mississippi State. Where they've got a second down and 17 as they just allowed the only the second sack of A.J. McCarron in the last 21 quarters of play. That's why they're in a long yardage situation. This is a screen down for Alabama. They love to run screens. They got good backs that are good with the ball after the catch on screen. And right now it's T.J. Yeldon that's in the backfield with A.J. McCarron. And now McCarron is going to have to run with it and shows his wheels. Nice move at the 33-yard line to pick up about three extra yards. You know, that's, that's important for A.J. McCarron. You know, he doesn't have to do that very often, but one of the things that NFL scouts still want to see with A.J. McCarron, one is arm strength and his ability to drive the football down the field, and the other one is this. Can he make plays with his legs when things break down? The way the NFL game is changing and evolving from the quarterback position, that has become even more important. Nice play that time by A.J. Makes the third down more manageable because he picked up 11 yards. Now they look a little bit confused, and finally he settles them down on third down and seven at the 31. Two-man rush. Swing Nine pass block. out to Yeldon, and Yeldon trying to make everybody miss. Hurdles one man, and he's very close to a first down. I love the call by Jeff Collins. Rush two, drop nine, but when you get out in space, you have to make a tackle. I mean, that should have been stopped well short of the first down. And instead, it's fourth and very short for Alabama. And Nick Saban didn't even hesitate on fourth down this early in the ball game. Already down in the opposition's side of the field at the 25. And they go for it on fourth and one. Two tight ends and the fullback Fowler in there as well as Yeldon. Yeldon straight ahead. Easily gets a first down and a couple more. Now you would expect Doug Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator, to think about a play action pass and maybe a throw towards the end zone. They like deep crossing routes off their play action. When they get their running game going a little bit, that sets up their play action pass game to, to get the big chunk plays. From the 23, opening drive of the game. Alabama's used six minutes. This is the 11th play of the drive. 
And A.J. McCarron's been perfect so far, including a scramble that got him in good shape on that last third down. Play action, bootleg. Throws on the run, incomplete. There's his first incompletion of the opening quarter. Extended for Amari Cooper. Preston Smith was the guy putting some heat on A.J. that time, rolling out of the pocket. Now, a lot of people have labeled A.J. McCarron as a game manager. I think he's more talented that, than that. I think he's much better than that. But I told him on the phone, I said, you know what? Take that as a compliment. Right. Because some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now are also great game managers. There's Peyton a Manning, lot to be said. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, they're yeah. managing too. You know, he's managed to get him down to the 23-yard line. Second down at 10. In the pistol set this time. And it's Yeldon. And he got a little bit of an opening off the left side and got it down to the 16, a pickup of six. Here's some of the guys that Todd was talking about. Well, you take a look at, as starting quarterbacks in college football, A.J.'s numbers better than all of them. And look at the bottom, wins versus top 10 opponents. He has seven, two national championships, and he is locked in. I think he's gonna be an excellent NFL quarterback, but right now he's focused on something that nobody has done in college football. That's lead his team to three consecutive national championships. That's a lot of jewelry. Third down and four. Again, play fake, rolls and throws to the corner, incomplete. Intended for DeAndre White. And it brings up fourth down. That's a good stop for Mississippi State. You know, they gave up some plays. They had their backs to the wall a little bit here in their own territory, and they come up with a nice stop on third down to force a field goal attempt. That'll bring out Cade Foster, who's 9 out of 10 on the year. McCarron, keep in mind, is a holder, and always is. And it's going to be about a 33-yard field goal attempt. Foster had a big 41-yarder and was perfect in his extra points in a win over LSU last week. From 33, the kick on the way and good. So the opening drive of the ball game, Alabama takes it almost the length of the field, but a nice job by Mississippi State to hold them to three. Tyler Russell in the offense of Mississippi State is up next. Lewis. Well, a nice return Out to the 24-yard line as we check in with Holly. Well, Mississippi State will be without their most productive starting quarterback. Dak Prescott has started six games for Mississippi State this season, and he's been terrific, accounting for 69% of their passing offense, 39% of their rushing offense. And guys, in fact, he is the leading rusher on this team. Four times this season, he's had over 100 yard rushing appearances. So they'll miss his productivity on the ground. But Tyler Russell is a senior. This is his fourth start of the season. Guys, he was recruited by Alabama, didn't end up there. He may have something to prove against the Crimson Tide in his final opportunity. One of the captains out of Meridian, Mississippi. He was 50% on his throws last year against Alabama for 169 yards. Here's his first throw of this night. And it's a low one hopper intended for Ladarius Perkins. Well, Tyler Russell, Holly talked about the injury to Prescott. He missed four games and parts of two others with his own issues. He had a concussion in the opener against Oklahoma State, came back from that and injured his ankle early in the Kentucky game. So he's had a very rough, physically a rough senior year, but uh, a, a very capable thrower, not the running threat that Prescott is, but the better of the two in the, in the passing game. Second down and 10 here from the 24. The backfield empty as Perkins comes out to the bottom of your screen as a wide out. Russell's throw this time is true. And it's close to a first down to Malcolm Johnson. And let's take a look at our impact players tonight brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Jamie and Lewis leads him in touchdown receptions. He's also thrown three touchdowns. The Runya Wilson, freshman wide receiver, career high game for him last week. And Collins and Ha Ha Clinton Dix might be as good a tandem of safeties yeah. as there is in college football. Yeah, they're outstanding. And, and remember, the other starting safety, Vinny Sensiri, got hurt a couple yeah. weeks ago. They are loaded at that position. Third down in the yard on the opening drive for Mississippi State. They're 39% on their third down conversions this year. A little B. Perkins trying to take it wide, and he got there, put his shoulder. And did it well into Cyrus Jones and took him for a ride. A pickup of four to first down. One area of this Mississippi State team that I think 
matches up pretty well against Alabama is their offensive line. I think they're a good unit. They're led by their left guard, Gabe Jackson, who's an All-American, making his 49th career start tonight. They're a big physical group. And Mississippi State can run the football. 250 yards a game, they average. They ran for 299 last week against Texas A&M, but this is a, a little different ta a challenge with this front seven of Alabama. Gabe's their bell cow, all 340 pounds of him. Here's a throw out to Perkins. Got one block in front from the wide receiver and fell forward for three as we check in for the first time tonight with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brad, Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. In the Big 12, Baylor, one of the undefeated teams, but already down 14-7 at Texas Tech. Baker Mayfield. Oh, oh, no, why did we put the graphic up? You won't believe the catch Eric Ward made. I'll promise you at halftime, no graphic, you'll see the catch. A one-hand beauty, guys. All right, we'll wait for that until <laughs> halftime. We've got six minutes left in quarter number one here. Mississippi State playing in ranked Alabama team for the seventh straight year and they've lost 14 straight to ranked teams they'd love to ruin Alabama's season rough snap Russell handles it and got the throw off somehow Perkins made the catch and CJ Mosley made the tackle you're gonna see Alabama or Mississippi State with a lot of short quick possession type throws I mean that's a big key to their chances tonight to give themselves manageable opportunities on third down they had third and one the first third down another situation where the quarterback doesn't have to hold the ball long to get a throw on third down I don't want to give CJ Mosley more tackles than he deserves that was Trey the priest the other linebacker that made the hit and made the hit short of the first down so it's third down a short three and an empty backfield for Tyler Russell here comes the heat Russell trying to go straight up lost the ball covered by one of his linemen or Alabama would have had a gift at the 45-yard line. Well, I do think Tyler Russell, even though he's not the runner Prescott is, is going to have to make some plays with his legs, but he better take care of the football. Carrying it very loosely. You know, it, everything's slippery here tonight. Yeah. The floors are slippery <laughs> in the bathroom, in the hallways. <laughs> that football is slippery tonight. I don't, I don't know what it is, just the, the combination of weather conditions. But he needs to hold on to the football. There's a little bit of mist in the air and a lot of humidity. And you're right. There are more of those yellow wet floor signs around here than I've seen in a long time. David Bell to punt. End over end kick. Fair catch called for. Christian Jones lets it bounce. And this is going to be down inside the 10-yard line. So 47-yard punt. A.J. McCarron set to go back out there. And Nick Saban loves this guy. I think, you know, AJ's probably the most underrated player in college football. Production. Playing at MitsubishiCars.com. Back in Starkville, kind of a muggy night. Bully's going, yeah, hook me up, hook me up, <laughs> hook me up. <laughs> Three nothing Alabama. <laughs> they got the ball back at their own eight yard line. DJ Yeldon. Behind A.J. McCarron on the stretch to the left side and waiting for him is a Mississippi State defense that takes him all the way to the end zone. Loss of about four. Caleb Ewells was the first guy there. Well, I mentioned this front of Mississippi State is pretty big. They're pretty stout. Caleb Ewells is not the biggest guy up there, but he's quick. He's got good off-the-ball quickness. P.J. Jones on the inside as well. There's Ewells with the... Quick move, the penetration into the backfield, the first one to get to Yeldon. And another negative play for the Mississippi State defense. DJ's carried it six times, he's only got nine yards, and now he's about three yards deep in the Alabama end zone. Second down at 14. He'll get it again. And again, he breaks a tackle or two to pick up four. As we take a look at our impact players, brought to you by Chick-fil-A, and he's obviously one of them. On his way to another 1,000-yard season. O.J. Howard had a big touchdown in the LSU game. True freshman becoming part of the offense. On the other side, Bernard Rick McKinney leads the team in tackles and sacks. And Nico Whitley, four interceptions, leads them on the back end of that defense, which right now has forced Alabama to a third down and nine. And they've done a good job forcing opponents into three and outs. See if they can make Alabama punt from deep in their own territory. 
McCarron at his own goal line. Incomplete intended for Yeldon. Wanted to throw a middle screen. And Mississippi State's defense is fired up. Jeff Collins, the defensive coordinator, was on Nick Saban's staff in 2007. Nick's first year at Alabama. He was the recruiting coordinator and an assistant. And uh, this is a pretty big game for him. And that was an excellent call on third down. It'll mix up with the third 30 personnel. And they force Cody Mandel to be five yards in his own end zone. Jamie and Lewis is on the other end, and he's a dangerous return man. I mentioned he catches touchdowns. He throws touchdown passes in a lot of different ways. He can be a major factor. He's going to get a shot at this one, but he's going to have to backpedal to the 36. And the ball came right off his chest, and it's loose. And he covered it, but he lost a lot of yardage in doing so. Well, that could have been a disaster. As it is, the Bulldogs have it back offensively. But this could have been trouble. Hit him right on top of the four. And then Landon Collins let him have it, but he got back to cover it. Bulldogs trailing by three when we come back. One of Alabama's best special teams players is Landon Collins. This is him right here, and he is just going to beat his man right off the bat as a gunner. He used to play on every special teams, but now that he's become the starting safety with the injury to Sinceri, he's only on punt coverage and kickoff coverage, and I think you have to put two guys on him. You can't just single him out there as a gunner. He's too fast and too effective on that position. Then he was a key guy in almost every special team yeah. before his knee injury. So second possession for the Bulldogs at their own 21-yard line. This is Shumpert, and Ashton Shumpert goes out for pickup of four. And you know, Mississippi State obviously was very fortunate to recover that fumble, heads-up play by Lewis, but they can't afford plays like that in this game. They had a chance to flip the field, get the ball right around midfield after the three and out. They can't afford to take those steps backwards because they're going to have a very difficult time driving the length of the field on this Alabama defense. And Dan Mullen told us we got to play our A game and hope that Alabama for some reason plays their maybe C yeah. game. <laughs> Absolutely. Second down at seven. Four wide outs for Russell. Down the middle. And this one's tipped and incomplete. That was intended for Chappelle. And it brings up third down and long. And again, the difference right here after that muffed punt, third and long from inside your own 25-yard line is a whole lot different than third and long from midfield. Right. And again, Dak Prescott can only look on from the sideline and street close. Third down and seven. Trips to the right side and now... They'll bring it in motion. Fred Ross to the near side. Alabama, four-man rush. Going to lob one out there to Perkins. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds by Jones before he can get to the first down marker. Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator for the Tide. His group is forced to fourth down. And a punting situation for Mississippi State. Baker Swedenberg has been a good punter for Mississippi State, averaging almost 44 yards a kick. And Christian Jones, I mentioned he's got a kick return for a touchdown this year. He's also got a punt return for a touchdown. Swedenberg a couple of steps to the right, lays it up high, nice kick. Fair catch. <laughs> Jones makes it over his head with two hands. 53-yard punt, no return. We'll return in a moment with Alabama back on offense. Alabama with a 3-0 lead. And again, starting inside their own 20-yard line. McCarron flares it out complete to Kenyon Drake. Drake's run out of bounds, a pickup of six, and we pick up Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, Taco Bell studio update. Big 12, Baylor and Texas Tech. Texas Tech with a 20-7 lead over the Bears, but you know how quickly Baylor can strike. This is Levi Norwood. Takes the punt back 58 yards for a touchdown. Baylor's added another score, and they're on top after one quarter, 21-20. <laughs> wow, crazy game here. Low scoring in the SEC. Alabama with a second down at two. And Drake bounces off 
the tackles of Bernard Rick McKinney and got the first down. Nice one-two punch. Alabama under Nick Saban's always had that, it seems. Yeldon and Drake in this case. Before that, it was Mark Ingram and Lacey and all the rest of the guys. Every year, they seem to have two good backs. Well, they keep fresh legs in there, and uh, that was a beautiful tackle right in the hole by their probably the best player on this Mississippi State defense, Bernardrick McKinney. He's a sophomore, 6'5", about 250, can really run. Freshman All-American a year ago, and he did a great job fundamentally filling the hole on that play and making the tackle. We said he's their leading tackler and tops the Sharks in sacks as well. McCarron over the middle. Got it to Drake, and nice open field tackle. Only a pickup of two, and it's McKinney again. Yeah. And that time you saw the speed and the burst of a big guy like McKinney catching Drake from behind. End of the first quarter. End of the lead. And they do pretty well in the second quarter. First snap of the second quarter is the second down and nine, and a blitz coming on McCarron. Fires crossing route out to the 35 to Christian Jones. You know, one thing that's been pretty interesting here in the first quarter of play, Mississippi State defensively feels pretty comfortable in defending the run without bringing an extra safety down by the line of scrimmage. They're playing with two deep safeties, which allows them to play more pass coverage behind that front. And so far, it's worked out pretty well for them. Alabama's only got one play over 10 yards. They've got another third down situation, third and four. McCarron scanning the field, in and out of the hands, and almost intercepted by Christian Holmes. T.J. Eldon had his hands on it, and then number 44 almost had a pick. Well, if Christian Holmes would have had his head up, he probably would have gotten an interception. I don't think he saw the ball. He was making a beeline for the back and never saw the football, and it hit him right in the face. But good pressure forced McCarron to look for a dump off and another stop by the Bulldog defense. Even though they haven't scored in the ball game, they got to feel pretty good right Absolutely. now. Alabama three to nothing and forcing another punt. Cody Mandel is usually not this busy of a punter this early in a game. Again, now that looks like they have two guys. Nope, just one on Collins. And this punt. End over end, and Lewis has to let it roll, and that might be a big mistake because it's going out at about the one-yard line. That's two plays now that Lewis has made a bad decision. He didn't feel cleanly the first punt, and he has to catch that one. His offense in the last 17 seasons, there have been some losses along the way. Of course, he wasn't part of some of those, but uh, there was precedent set in 1980 when Mississippi State beat a top-ranked Alabama team in a thriller. Six to three. Right now, we've got a three to nothing game. And Russell off play action. Got to get rid of it from his own end zone and incomplete. He intended for Fred Brown as we check in with Holly. When we spoke with the leader of this Alabama football team, A.J. McCarron, this week, he said, you know, we didn't expend the same amount of energy that we did last year against LSU, and we had to drive down the field and win it late. But nonetheless, we felt like we let everybody down when we beat LSU last year and then went and lost the very next game. He said that is not going to happen this year. The leadership on this team is too good. They think that they've been locked in and had good practices this week, but not moving the ball particularly well right now against Mississippi State. And, of course, that loss was to Johnny Manziel and Texas A&M, the only blemish in a 14-game season that included another national championship. And now trying to go for three in a row. And out in front, three to nothing here. Russell, deep in his own end zone, throws a strike complete. It's a tough throw. Tell you what, you're thrown out of your own end zone. You can't afford a holding penalty or it's two points for Alabama. And you stick it right between two Alabama defenders. This is a nice throw by Russell right on the number four. And that's the first thing Lewis has held on to tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Brings up third down at two. Josh Robinson in as a wide receiver. And basically, it's just a shotgun for Tyler Russell. Now he's being joined in the backfield. And he'll take it straight ahead. He's not going to make the first down. There's just a difference between Tyler Russell running that play and Dak Prescott. Prescott's about 10, 15 pounds heavier and has the ability to break more tackles than Tyler Russell. Now, this is a big, sturdy defensive front that Alabama has. 
So the field position, this will be in Alabama's favor now. Yeah. Because Swedenberg is going to be kicking from his own end zone. And Christian Jones is waiting at about the 45 yard line on the other end for Alabama. First thing is catch the snap and then get it out of there. And he does. But it's a short kick. Not a good one. And it's going to bounce and stay in Mississippi State territory. So that didn't work out so well. Only a 32 yard kick, and Alabama's going to go to town. 3 0 with a little over 12 minutes remaining in the second quarter. Well, Alabama picked up 39 yards on the exchange of possessions play action deep to Amari Cooper good possibility right here from the 43 yard line there's the play action McCarron loads it and has to reload and through well, intended bounced. for Cooper yeah. and it's a one hopper nice pressure again yeah they've gotten consistent pressure on AJ McCarron this offensive line for Alabama we mentioned has not given up many sacks all year that was the part of this team that started slowly but has played well here of late. But so far, the defensive front of Mississippi State is giving them some problems. Preston Smith is the guy that got the pressure again. He's done that more than once tonight. And Jeff Collins, their defensive coordinator, told us yesterday he's our big time pass rusher. He's up on the top of that defensive line right now. McCarron and the gun on second down and 10. They'll hand it off to Drake. And Drake got a couple. That's it. We'll bring up third down and eight. That time PJ Jones and Caleb Ewell's in there to make the stop. Again, th this defense matches up so much better with their big personnel than they did last week against Texas A&M. The hurry up offense, the spread formations, and a quarterback that is fast and elusive and creative. It's just a much better setup for Mississippi State playing Alabama. Alabama only one out of five on their third down conversions. They've missed their last four, and it's third down and eight here. Bulldogs bring up some extra bodies, but will they bring that pressure? No, they won't. Three-man rush. McCarron fires near sideline and drops. Would have been a first down. DeAndrew White just didn't hold on to it. And just a lack of concentration at the end of the play. Three-man rush. You got to find a hole with the eight defenders. He has one to DeAndre Wright. Good throw. Would have been a first down. Just a lack of concentration at the end. Second three and out for Alabama. We don't say that very often. Mandel to punt. And Lewis has made two mistakes so far as a punt returner. One he dropped and one he let go and let bounce when he should have fielded it and went out at the two-yard line. Let's see if he does something with this one or if he'll even get a chance. Probably won't get a chance. This one's going all the way to the end zone as Mandel got too much of that one. Tried to pooch it and couldn't. 11 minutes, 8 seconds remaining in Starkville. Our college football on ESPN and the SEC in a low scoring of 27. Okay, we'll give you a few minutes to think that one over. Well, I think with Dan's goal right now for his offense, his defense is playing brilliantly right now. They got to try to get the ball at least to midfield and gain a field position edge to try to create a short field for their offense. They've got better field position than last time, that's for sure, starting at the 20. And here's the pitch out to Perkins. And Perkins, his second effort. See where they spot him. I think he got five or six out of that. Perkins had a thousand yard season last year. Comes in tonight. He had 433 entering the game. And almost 2,500 in his Mississippi State career on the ground. And he did get six, second down at four. Three wideouts now Lewis and Johnson and Wilson. Lot of all purpose yardage for Ladarius Perkins. That's a good career. He's in motion right now to empty the backfield. He wanted to throw it to him, I think, and now fires and completes it down to the 45-yard line of Malcolm Johnson. Nice throw. 21-yard pickup. Well, credit the protection because Tyler Russell had a chance to hold on to this ball, reload, and then find something open up. Defender slipped and fell down, and Collins, the safety, not able to get there fast enough. Nice job by Russell seeing the slip. 
by Jerry Williams, number 20, and getting the ball to the open man. And his right tackle, Charles Sidaway, helped the cause a little yep. bit too. Gave him just an extra half second to let that one rip out to the 46, where it's first down. Play fake in the screen. This one's going to lose yardage to Joe Morrow. Loss of a yard. Cyrus Jones played that beautifully. Allen got out there to help. One of the reasons that Mississippi State, I mean, they always use a lot of spread formations, a lot of three, four wide receivers, a lot of empty backfield sets, but it's particularly important against Alabama's defense because the more you bring your formations in, the more they can disguise what they like to do. Right. This is a team that likes to blitz. They like to bring pressure from a lot of different angles, and when you spread them out, it forces them to show you where the pressure's coming from a little easier. Second down, 11. Perkins got an opening off the right side, got to midfield. Xavier Dixon brought him down there. Well, again, you'd love to get points here. You got some momentum going, but if nothing else, they've moved the ball to the 50-yard line, and they have now gained a little bit of an edge in the field position game. And when you play Alabama, you have to win field position. This is the first play run on Alabama's end of the field, and it's by about the length of a football. Third down and five. Empty set again with Russell in the gun. Pressure coming. He loads it out, completes it to Johnson again. Johnson fighting his way down inside the 30. First down, Mississippi State. Nice job by Tyler Russell. He knew he was going to get hit. He knew pressure was coming from an unblocked man, and he hangs in there. He steps into the throw and takes the hit and gets the first down conversion. C.J. Mosley hit him right in the chest with his helmet, and he still got that throw out to the tight end. So now they not only got it to midfield, they've got it at the Alabama 27-yard line and starting to threaten here. And now an option and a pitch to Perkins. Looked a little move on, might have a face mask there, and there that comes the flag. Mosley, I think, got his hand up there in the helmet area and couldn't get his hand out of there. That's going to be a first down. This drive, a nice mixture of run and pass, formations and motions, got this Alabama defense a little bit on their heels. Personal foul, face mask, number 33 defense. Half the difference to the and down the run, first down. There you see Mosley getting it up there high on the face mask and then turning his body with it. So no doubt about that. First penalty of the game is a major one, and it puts the line of scrimmage at the 11-yard line. Last year, Dan Mullen said, we moved the ball against Alabama okay, but we couldn't score. It was 24 to nothing at halftime. They have a chance to, at the very least, tie this ball game here in the first half. And it'll be an empty backfield again. Russell looking to throw from the 11. Fires a slant inside the 5 to Lewis. It's all the offensive line. They're, they're giving Tyler Russell time to find receivers, and he's in a pretty good rhythm right now. Again, not the running threat, the dual threat that Dak Prescott is, but he's a pretty good thrower if you give him protection. And right now, Alabama doesn't give much in the red zone. And they're getting threatened right here, I'll tell you that much. Russell's hit his last five passes. Second down and three, they can get a first down at the one. Hand off, Perkins trying to take it right side, got a good block and then slipped and went down. He actually got a block from Lewis's wide yeah. receiver and it looked like he maybe could have gotten to the corner. Now we have a flag on the far side of the field. Might be offsides. Alabama might have lined up offsides. Side, number 40 defense. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Adrian Hubbard lined up offsides as Todd said. Half the distance to the goal is getting down there close. This is where they really, Mississippi State, misses Dak Prescott, though. Ten rushing touchdowns, 230-pound quarterback, and it gives you a lot of variety in your run game in the red zone when you have a running quarterback. Mississippi State threatening to take the lead on the top-ranked team in the country. Second down and a yard at the two. Perkins relocates to the left of Russell. 
I don't know. I think it's still short. And it will be at least the length of the football short. To that point about the lack of Prescott at this part of the field, Alabama's defense well aware of that too. When we met with Nick Saban last night, they didn't know if it was going to be Prescott right. or Russell or both. Once they found out that he was in street clothes, that changes their approach to how they handle the run game of Mississippi State. Less than a yard away from a first down and only about a yard and a half away from a touchdown. And Alabama doesn't give up touchdowns over the last five years very often. Russell, empty backfield, looking to throw. Fires to the end zone, and it's in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, and Mosley broke it up. Jamie and Lewis was the guy that had his hands on it. And another flag in the end zone at the goal line. I think it's defensive holding on Mosley, possibly. Nope, an eligible man downfield. So Dan Mullen with his quarterback at his side awaiting the official call for Mark Curies. And Nick Saban says let's back him up if you were reading lips. And out for Saber downfield, number 81 offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. You know, the good news is Mississippi State gets another shot at it. By accepting the penalty, it's still third down. Yeah. Now, 81 is a wide receiver. He's an eligible receiver, but by formation, he must not have been eligible, and uh, that's a freshman mistake. Deronia Wilson is a uh, a promising young wide receiver. Was an outstanding basketball player in high school, only two years of high school football. That time didn't line up correctly. An Alabama native, as a matter of fact, from Birmingham. Third down and six. C.J. Mosley trying to get everybody lined up defensively for the tie. He's thinking about bringing a blitz, and Russell's going to take a timeout. Probably a wise move. A little bit of confusion there, and they don't want to waste an opportunity. Deep in Alabama territory with a third down and six. And so Russell will come to the sideline. The Bulldogs will be down to one timeout, but it'll be a good timeout if they score. Well, and again, I... 5.43, we'll take taking it down to a third down and six at the seven yard line. And an illegal receiver downfield. That five yard penalty backed him up to the seven, where it's third and six. So they can get a first down at the one. The end zone is seven yards away, and that would put him in the lead. Tyler Russell. Fakes the handoff to Perkins and lobs it to the corner. Incomplete intended for Lewis. And Smith was back there covering. And they're going to bring out the field goal unit. Pretty good coverage by Geno Smith. Right on the receiver. I'm not sure that the pass was catchable anyway. I think it was a little thrown a little bit too far out of the reach of Jamie and Lewis. And Mississippi State will have to settle for the field goal attempt. Sobe asked in for the point of the uh, field goal attempt of 23 yards. And he missed it to the right. How disheartening is that? Take it the length of the field, have it down at the two yard line, have a penalty, go out to kick what should be a chip shot field goal, and against the number one team in the country, come away with a goose egg. Just can't do it, you know, and, and in the special teams tonight, three mishaps for Mississippi State have cost them. You can't waste any opportunities against the number one team in the country, especially when that number one team in the country leads the nation in scoring defense. You've got to capitalize on any opportunity you get. Ledge, nine plays, 73 yards, a whole chunk off the second quarter clock. And a zero on the scoreboard. No way you can win that way if you do that consistently. So now Alabama takes over at the 20-yard line. And it's Yeldon for about nine. And we check in with Reese Davis. All right, Brad, time for Sports Center right now. Brought to you by Ally Bank on ABC. Coach O's Trojans 
giving to Sanford all at once. That's Buck Allen going in for the touchdown. Two-point conversion was good. It's on ABC, and it's 14-7 SC. Here it's 3-0 Alabama. Should have been 3-3 at the worst. The Mississippi State missed a 23-yard field goal. Yeldon got nine at second down and a yard. He stays there in the backfield behind McCarron. And he'll get the carry again. And he's got the first down. And picked up about three more after that. Alabama has not had a lot of success running the football out of their normal formations. Only 35 yards rushing before that play. So they've gone to a little two tight ends here to start this possession. And they get a couple runs for a first down. Well, A.J. McCarron, he hit his first four passes of the game. And since that time, he's only three out of nine. So they haven't done much on the ground or through the air. But they do have a first down at the 33-yard line. And he'll throw here. And he's going deep down the sideline. And it's out of bounds. Jones made the catch. But he's out. Matthew Wells was back there covering with him. Mind you get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN. We all know about the curse of Babe Ruth and what about the curse of Bobby Lane. Lions have been under that for 55 years. Matt Stafford and company trying to change that. 10 a.m. tomorrow, Boomer and the gang will discuss it on NFL Countdown. And before you set your lineups for fantasy football, fantasy football now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Experts give you all the latest news, injury reports, and predictions on your top fantasy players tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Yeldon got a nice block. McCarron throws incomplete. <laughs> Jamerson Love had two interceptions last week off of Johnny Manziel. This one, he had visions of taking for a touchdown. Times it perfectly, cuts in front of Bell, and if he catches that, he is off to the end zone. <laughs> no doubt about it. So it ricocheted off his hands and off Kenny Bell's. And it brings up third and ten. Mississippi State on third and long has only rushed two or three and dropped eight into coverage. That's what it looks like they're lined up to do again on this third down and ten. A.J. McCarron has missed on his last five passes. And he's going to take a timeout here before third and ten. First time timeout, Alabama. So that's Alabama's first timeout. Four minutes and four seconds remaining here in the half. Low scoring affair. Alabama 3-0. How about 1980 though? Tide entered the game as the number one team in the country. They won 22 straight in the series. Alabama's kicker Peter Kim had a 49-yard field goal in the second quarter for Alabama's only lead. After two field goals by Bulldogs Dana Moore, Mississippi State led 6-3. With 25 seconds left in the ball of the Mississippi State four-yard line, Alabama's Don Jacobs was hit by Tyrone Keyes. He fumbled. Billy Jackson recovered. And it was an upset of then number one Alabama. Mississippi State won it six to three. We've got the makings of the same kind of game here tonight. Three nothing Alabama, a team that comes in as one of the higher scoring teams around. Dan Mullins, Bulldogs went on a long drive that covered 73 yards and missed a field goal, or it would be tied up right now. So following the timeout, Alabama faces a third and ten. Well, I said before that drive, their number one goal was to try to flip the field, field yep. position. They did that, and if they get the stop here, they can still achieve that goal. But you're right, missed golden opportunity for points. It's the fifth time the tie tonight has had a third and seven or longer in the first half. Empty backfield for McCarron. Trying to break a string of five straight incompletions. And now he's scrambling around to try to find somebody open. McCarron throws on the run. A flag is down. Probably a holding call and maybe an interception on the other end. I think he got it. Put. They're going to call this an interception, I think. So that is Calhoun. He's got it. And Mississippi State's got the ball. They'll decline the penalty. We'll have to wait to see about the penalty, but it sure looked like a holding. Number 79 offense. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is an interception. First down, Mississippi State. First interception of the year 
for Javez Calhoun. On a guy who doesn't throw many. Yep. And it's excellent coverage down the field because it was only a three-man rush for Mississippi State. They showed blitz, only rushed three, actually only two, but nowhere to go with the football for A.J. McCarron. Tried to buy time, and then just a excellent heads-up play by Calhoun catching the deflection for an interception. At the 40-yard line. First interception in the last 139. A.J. McCarron passes. So an opportunity again. Let's see if Mississippi State can take advantage of this one. Play action. Russell wants to go back to the left with it. And he got too much pressure to get anything on that pass. And let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, last year when Mississippi State went into Alabama, Tyler Russell played pretty well in stretches. He was able to move the ball up and down the field on Alabama's defense, just couldn't convert in the red zone. So his offensive coordinator, Les Kenning, actually showed him video this week of them moving the ball, driving the ball against that very good Alabama defense, trying to build confidence, but they can't continue to come away empty in the red zone. We'll see how they can get back down there in the next 344. Here's Perkins, and he slips again, and again, it's the field's a little slick. Yeah. Not nearly as slick as Todd said of the floors up here in the press box. <laughs> well, not only can they not afford to come away empty in the red zone, they can't afford to throw a bad incompletion on first down and come up second and ten, and now they find themselves at third and ten, and uh, the potential of a very quick three and out. Josh Robinson tailback in a slot on the left side as a fifth receiver. So it's Tyler Russell all by his lonesome. Here comes a blitz from Mosley. Russell fires it incomplete. Nice play defensively by Geno Smith. Second one he's made tonight from the secondary. Nice job by the Alabama defense. Their offense is sputtering a little bit. The defense comes out. Mississippi State has good field position and they get a very quick three and out thanks to the forced incompletion on first down with the pressure third three and out for Mississippi State so Christian Jones is going to wait on Swedenberg's punts and almost had it blocked Wow! not sure how it didn't get blocked it's going to roll dead down at the 22 yard line Kevin Norwood was in there fast was he ever and again the punter almost walked right into getting that block because they do that little two step to the right and here comes Norwood and it went I think he got a piece of it man did he not get a piece of it with the right hand maybe that's why it didn't go very far at any rate they've got it back the tide with a three point lead earlier tonight we asked you the Athlon trivia question prior to Dan Mullen who's the last Mississippi State head coach to have a career record over 500. I'd say maybe Jackie Sherrill. Daryl Royal. All right. Wow. Tricky. Yeah. That's a tricky one. There's the coach. Looks a little different than he does in Burnt Orange for Texas. Right now, Dale Mullen's team has given Alabama all they want and then some. But the Tide still has two timeouts remaining. Here's TJ Yeldon. Yeldon into the secondary down the sideline. One man to beat. And he'll get dragged out of bounds, but a huge gain down inside the 30-yard line. Mississippi State went to a bare defense, which means they committed a lot of guys to the line of scrimmage, expecting run, but it was blocked very, very well. Really, the key block was the two tight ends, O.J. Howard and Vogler, blocking at the point of attack. 84 and 88 opened this thing up for Yeldon, and Mississippi State gives up a big play. A 50-yarder, in fact. Nico Whitley saved the touchdown, but still Alabama's got it at the 28-yard line of the Bulldogs. McCarron throws it out to Jones on a screen, but that's read beautifully again by Bernardrick McKinney. One of the things that has haunted this Mississippi State team, five games this year, they have given up points right at the end of the half. It's cost them a couple times. It's such a demoralizing thing to play well and then right at the end of the half give up points and change momentum. It happened last week against A&M. They need to try to avoid that same scenario tonight. Here it is inside two minutes again. Second down and 14. 
Yeldon going the other way. Now the cutback run, broke a tackle. He's got another first down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. So T.J. Yeldon doing this drive all on his own. Alabama finding the running game difficult tonight against this rugged front, so they're going a lot more two tight ends here in the second quarter. Again, Vogler and O.J. Howard at the point of attack doing a nice job blocking on the edge for Alabama. Yeldon has Alabama in the red zone of the 17-yard line with another first down and a minute 20 to play in the half. He'll take it again. They've got him trapped this time for a loss. When we get back to that point of giving up points and plays at the end of a half, sometimes that's the result of a young team, which this is. Right. Mississippi State's a very young football team. It's also the result of a team that is trying to get over the hump, maybe a middle-of-the-road team that's trying to become an upper echelon team and doesn't quite know how to finish the deal. You've got to finish the half, and you've got to finish games, and uh, that's been a little bit of a problem for Mississippi State. Let's see if they can close the deal here under a minute in the half. And the clock running, second down and 11. A.J. McCarron, four-man rush, pumps once. Now he's in trouble, and he'll throw at the last moment intended for Yeldon, and incomplete with 30 seconds left. I've been impressed with Mississippi State's defense. Other than that long run they gave up to Yeldon on first down, they have really locked down this Alabama offense. An offense coming into the game that was averaging 453 yards a game. They've had a lot of third down and long situations, and they've had a very difficult time running the football or protecting their quarterback. Only two plays over 10 yards, both by Yeldon, a 50-yarder and a 15-yarder. So no pass plays over 10. They're probably going to need a pass play here. Third down and 11. Corner blitz. McCarron, who was hit, got away, throws, and got it complete. And it's Vogler, the tight end, for the touchdown. McCarron bought himself just an extra second by getting away from the rush and found his tight end open on the sideline. Great job by Cyrus Kowanjo, the left tackle. Watch 71 pick up the corner blitz. Got just enough of him to allow A.J. to step up. And by formation, they put the big tight end out wide, and he was working on a smaller corner, Jamerson Love, and powered his way into the end zone. How about that nice little sidestep and spin by Vogler to get to the end zone. Foster for the point after. And as Todd said, you got to wonder how demoralizing this is right now with 20 seconds left in the half to be in a game that should have been tied, and now it's 10 to nothing. A.J. McCarron has not had a great first half, but he made a great play right there. Bought time, stepped up, and Vogler, excellent individual effort. And once again, Mississippi State gives up a touchdown inside the last 30 seconds of the half. Last week, they scored to make the score 16 to 14. And in four plays, Johnny Manziel went the length of the field and scored with under 20 seconds to boast the lead. And the uh, same thing here for Alabama. With 20 seconds left in the half, let's check in with Reese. All right, Brad, coming up on the Buick Halftime Report, a fourth and 18 miracle, one of the greatest plays in the history of Auburn football. We'll show it to you if you somehow missed it. Alabama's not the only top five team that's in a fight. Stanford has all its wants with Coach O's Trojans right now, and Baylor's even being pushed by Texas Tech in what is turning into a score fest at Jerry World. Mark May, Lou Holtz are there. We'll see you in just a bit. All right, nice shoelaces, Reese. We'll see you in 20 seconds. 10 to nothing. <laughs> Alabama in front. That's a 78-yard drive in six plays. And on third down and 11, A.J. McCarron throws his 20th touchdown pass of the year to put the tide in front by 10. And, you know, 14 of his 20 touchdown passes have come against five or more rushers. When you blitz him, you take a real gamble. And it didn't pay off that time. Expecting a short kick, the two return guys were way up around the 10-yard line, and instead it went over their head. And so we're still at 20 seconds as they bring it out of the end zone out to the 25. Well, the most storied conference in college athletics. We'll live on a new network tradition. It's found a new home. The SEC Network launches in August 2014. For more information, go to www.getsecnetwork.com.
Reese.com. This is the one that Reese was just talking about. Just an unbelievable finish, and they'll show you at halftime. But what a gutsy, courageous performance again by Aaron Murray. Yeah. And he almost pulled it out of the end, even in the final seconds. The final seconds of our half is going to tick off as Mississippi State will head to the locker room, trailing by 10 in a game that should be no worse, no worse than 10-3. And another shutout. So we have seen Alabama two and a half games. We have yet to see the opposition score of points. Right now it's at 87 to 0 when Todd and Holly and I are around the tide. And Holly's down there right now. Well, Coach Saban, before that last drive, you had just 35 yards rushing. So what changed to allow TJ to really get things going? Well, you know, they're playing a lot of eight man fronts on us, and uh, we're not blocking them very well and controlling the line of scrimmage, and really just not playing very well in the passing game. I mean, that was not one of our best halves of football. We didn't respond and do things the way that we need to do them so that we can be successful more consistently. We got in a different formation and hit a couple runs. So if they continue with the eight-man front, what do you do differently? What's the formation? Well, we got to pass the ball more effectively. And, and, you know, they're dropping eight guys a lot on third down, so quarterbacks having to hold the ball. So we just need to do a better job of staying ahead in the sticks, not getting negative plays so that we can move the ball consistently. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Alabama halfway to being a perfect 10 on the season, but they only lead by 10 right away a touchdown toss of the year. But, partner, this game could be 7-3 to three Mississippi yeah. State or 3-3 three three in a tie game, but yeah. certainly not 10 nothing. or it shouldn't be. No, Mississippi State's defense played a brilliant first half until the final minute. Alabama had 35 on offensive plays. Only one gained more than 20 yards. That was the 50-yard run by Yeldon that set up that touchdown to make it 10-0. So now Mississippi State finds themselves behind 10-zip, but they do get the ball to start the second half. And our uh, drought of seeing nobody score <laughs> against Alabama has continued for two more quarters. So we've gone 10 quarters of football and not seen a point scored against the tie. Short kick, free ball. Whoa. And Christian Jones levels the guy trying to feel it, Brandon Holloway. The ball goes harmlessly out of bounds, but nothing harmless about that collision. And again, there's a starter playing on special teams and free ball and oh. wow. Really gets the ball and touched by the receiving. Boom! I'm just wondering why that's not a defenseless foul? player. And, uh, that <laughs> That was an awful high hit on a guy trying to field a ball. There was no flag. So the ball went out of bounds at the around the 18 yard line. Holloway being helped to the sideline. I don't blame him for giving him some help. I can't believe he got up. Vicious hit to start the quarter. Actually, the line of scrimmage is a 17. And that's where Tyler Russell will start things to open the third quarter offensively. And Perkins. Off the right side, got a couple before Brandon and Ivory made the hit. Time for our Discover Game Changer. And the Game Changer was E.J. Yeldon on a cutback run. First, and then a 50-yarder. That got him down close, 15 more yards. And then A.J. McCarron on the 18-yard touchdown pass to Brian Vogler. And Vogler, a nice move to get to the end zone. That's our only touchdown of the night. Russell's throw out in front and caught by Malcolm Johnson, who's been about his most dependable receiver tonight so far. Third down coming up, but let's check in with Holly. It's the little things in that first half that really hurt Mississippi State, driving the length of the field, failing to score. The muff plays on special teams. Dan Mullen said every little play matters when you're playing the number one team in the country. Not most plays, every play. And he said all the pressure is on Alabama. And Russell trying to throw a strike in there to Lewis. And he's hit by Williams looking for a flag and didn't get it. So well, it's going to be a three and out. That's not the way they wanted to start the third quarter. Now, three and out quickly. Alabama, tight coverage. They contest every throw. Jarek Williams came over the top of Lewis, but on a play for the ball. And so last week, when Alabama played LSU, they dominated the second half. They were a little out of sorts in the first half. Second half, they completely controlled the football game. Swedenberg, his last punt was almost blocked. This time he doesn't do that two-step to the right. He just kicks it straight away to Jones, who's waiting at the 25. And only got a couple yards on the return. Nice coverage down there by Will Redmond. A.J. McCarron's got the only touchdown without the ball in his hands when we come back. 20th touchdown pass of the year 
to Brian Vogler, our only touchdown of the game. And that guy, number 50, has played a whale of a game defensively for Mississippi State. A.J. McCarron in the pistol. Set will give it off to Yeldon. Yeldon sidestepped the first man. And now just bulls his way for about seven yards before they still don't have him down. The adjustments that Alabama made at halftime last week in their win over LSU really took two forms. The first was defensively they said we're going to blitz more and we're going to pressure the quarterback and cover guys and then offensively we're going to run the football. And they did both beautifully in that second half and one going away 38 to 17. Yeldon's next carry will have him at the century mark. If it's a positive gain he's got 99 yards right now. And now he's got 100 and something. And he lost the ball at the end of it, and Mississippi State on a one-hopper has it. Beneath Quez Brown with a fumble recovery. Well, this was really a good run, but Kendrick Market, they call him Pope Dog. He's five foot eight, about 170 pounds, and he gets bounced backwards, but not before he jars the ball loose from Yelp. There's the hit. He goes back, but the ball comes out, and Berniquez Brown comes up with it. So a turnover gives the Bulldogs another opportunity. And they start in Alabama territory at the 46-yard line. Alabama, two turnovers, and they haven't been made to pay for them so far. Tyler Russell, five receivers set. Fires deep down the middle, and he's got his man, and it's Mr. Dependable Malcolm Johnson. A pickup of 17. Malcolm Johnson, a big target in the middle of the field. Russell does a nice job stepping into that throw. That's tight coverage. C.J. Mosley closing quickly. Russell able to shoot it in there. Had that been a little bit later, Mosley might have had an interception, as it is a big game to the 29-yard line. And now it's back to Perkins. And he uh, slips again. Every time he tries to cut, he falls down. And again, Russell's made some nice throws, but that running game of Mississippi State without Dak Prescott and the, and the quarterback keeps and the quarterback design runs aspect of their run game really is limiting against this Alabama defense. Only 26 yards rushing for the Bulldogs tonight. And again, they find themselves in second down and 10 after Perkins slipped down at the line of scrimmage. Russell again in an empty backfield. Blitz coming from Alabama. Picked up nice. And throw and caught by Jamie and Lewis. An eight yard game. It'll bring up third down and two. I said early in the game, the one area of the field and the team that I think Mississippi State matches up the best is their offensive line. Watch them pick up the blitz. Number 66, Ben Beckwith picks up the blitzing linebacker. They give a nice pocket for Tyler Russell. And I think this offensive line has done a pretty nice job protecting their quarterback tonight. And now a third and relatively short for Mississippi State. This might be two down territory also. It's a long two to go on third down at the Alabama 22 yard line. Russell fires near side, first down and down to the 10. And it's Aranya Wilson, the freshman, and the Birmingham, Alabama native. That's his first catch. This is a good timing throw by Russell. Takes the snap, retreats two steps, steps into it, and as the receiver is coming out of his break, the ball is thrown outside, away from the defender. Pretty good coverage by Cyrus Jones, but the ball perfectly placed by Russell. So it's the second time inside the 10 on the night. Remember, they came away empty on a missed field goal in the first half. They've got it first and goal at the Bama 9. And here's Russell keeping it inside the 5. Backs his way to about the 3. He's still up. And now they're saying the ball came out. Well, there's a big pile up in the end zone. Alabama saying they had the football. At this point, it's either a touchdown or a touchback. 
But was it blown dead at the two? Touchdown. Wow. I love the call. Go ahead and call the design quarterback run for the guy who doesn't run as much. It's blocked well. Sidaway gets a nice block, number 77. And as he's backing in, the ball comes out. There it is on the ground. It's kicked into the end zone. And Mississippi State ends up with it on the bottom of the pile. Not really sure who covered it. That touchdown is under further review. But there the ball is rolling towards the goal line and across the goal line. Wow. The ball was ripped out. Could have been very close to forward progress being called, but there was no whistle. It looked like Landon Collins was going to come up with it and sit away. That's the difference between a 300-pound offensive tackle and a 210-pound free safety fighting for a football. Again, there it is at the one-yard line and rolling toward the goal line. And then the muscle battle begins at the bottom of the pile. What a crazy play. But that's the second time we've seen Tyler Russell put the ball on the ground when he has run. He hasn't run much. He got good yardage. It was a great call, but he has to take care of the football. So it's going to be a dream touchdown, I think, for Charles Sidaway. <laughs> the play's under official review. Steve Landis is our replay official. So we'll wait with them. But what a huge turnaround. First, the fumble recovery by Beniquez Brown. And here's a call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. <laughs> An alignment's dream. <laughs> the senior out of Eugene, Oregon, all 300 pounds of him, just wrestled the football away from everybody else. And it's 10-6 with an extra point coming up. And the extra point is barely good. A little trouble with the kicking department for Mississippi State. But they'll take every one they can get. And right now, they're right back in the football game. Now, for the first time, they capitalize on an Alabama mistake. They force the turnover. They turn it over themselves, but they come away with the ball at the bottom of the pile for a touchdown. This point was good. It's been to seven. And the place is lit up at Davis Wade Stadium. Bell's kick. Going to bounce around at a five, be picked up by Christian Jones there. Jones trying to go far side. A lot of maroon jerseys around him. And he'll be put down at the 22-yard line as we take a look at how Mississippi State is finding success tonight. Brought to you by Expedia. Well, their success started with the defensive play by the smallest guy out there. Kendrick Market comes up with a big hit, knocks the ball loose from Yeldon. And that got things going in a key third down completion. Russell to Wilson. And then the crazy touchdown play. Sit away, not only gets the recovery, but blocked really well on the play to start out. And comes up with the ball, fighting it away from Landon Collins for a touchdown to bring Mississippi State within three. There's your guy, Polk Dog. 5'8, about 180. Jeff Collins says he plays like he's 6'2", 220. <laughs> Big hit on that last drive. Now Alabama knows they're in a dog fight. 10-7, play action, McCarron. On first down, rips it near side, complete to Norwood. And that's a first down for the Tide. One of the things that people say about A.J. McCarron is that because their team has been so good and because their defense has been so great and dominant, you very rarely have seen him under adversity team behind or or momentum really swinging against him and right now he's he's got to prove himself in this kind of a situation even though they still lead momentum starting to shift towards mississippi state after that series of events kind of like a lobster that's never been in hot water <laughs> first down on that throw he's gonna throw on first down again it's tipped in the air and complete i think chris jones the defensive tackle got a hand on it 
This front four of Mississippi State is for real. I mean, they've got some big bodies up there. They collapse the pocket. They're long. They're physical. Good deflection there on first down. Brett Jones, another one of those big guys, a freshman 6'5", 305. Norwood in motion, sets up on the right side on second down and 10. And Yeldon trying to stiff arm and not getting away from Beniquez Brown, who had the fumble recovery earlier that led to the touchdown. Beniquez Brown is from Florence, Alabama. He's starting as a freshman in place of the injured Deontay Skinner, a fifth-year senior. Nice play in the open field going low on Yeldon. They think that Brown has a chance to be an outstanding player here. Little extra juice in this one being an Alabama kid. Yep, he was recruited by both Alabama and Auburn. And ends up here in Starkville. Third down and nine. Sixth time Alabama's had it third and eight or longer tonight. Play clock winding down to two. McCarron, plenty of time, zips it down the middle, and Christian Jones has got it. First down, Alabama. Nice pitch and catch. McCarron to Jones, a pickup of 26. Nice job, just an all vertical. You got two guys running vertical down the seam, and A.J. McCarron found the opening in the zone defense. They showed blitz, then they dropped out and played zone, and McCarron did a nice job of finding the open seam. Jones came in as a leading receiver for Alabama. That was a big one to pick up a third down. His fourth catch of the night has him at the 37-yard line of Mississippi State. McCarron well, going far side this time and another completion to Andrew Whites. And Whites backed out of bounds after another first down, Alabama. Well, you heard... Nick Saban at halftime tell Holly they're getting they're showing a lot of eight man fronts, which means they're trying to stop the run first and foremost. So they're committing extra bodies to the line of scrimmage, which means you have to throw the football. You got to protect your quarterback and you got to make plays down the field throwing it. And on this drive, A.J. McCarron has looked pretty sharp. Three out of four for 51 yards, in fact. First down at the 24. McCarron again to throw. And he's got another one. Or is he out of bounds? It's going to be a catch. Damari Cooper somehow got a foot down over there. The ball looks like it kind of sailed on A.J. a little bit. Hung in the air a while. Cooper knowing where the sideline is. I'm not sure he got a foot down. I don't know. I think he was still airborne, wasn't yep. he? He had to really go up for this because the ball did take off. Well, I don't know. Did he drag it or not? Left foot dragged a little bit, and you see some of that stuff on the turf come up just a little bit. I guess he got it. Wow. That's a great catch. Great footwork. Since the interception, A.J. McCarron is six out of seven throwing the football. And now that they're in the red zone, they can go back to the ground game if they choose on second down and three. And they will. And it's Yeldon, and he's got a first down. Picked up four. Nelson Adams brought him down, but he's going to move the sticks. And T.J. Yeldon over 100 yards on the night. Closing in on 1,000 for the season. Came in with 862. And he's got 120 tonight. One guy who's been quiet so far tonight for Alabama in terms of the passing game is the tight end O.J. Howard, number 88. Dangerous weapon this part of the field. First down at the Bulldog 13. Yeldon wraps both hands around the ball, broke one tackle, steps out around the 10. Nico Whitley knocked him out. And he picked up three more yards. The mark of a great team, a championship caliber team, is, is how do they respond to some adversity? Mississippi State gets the turnover. They go down and score. First points Alabama has given up in a while. And... Alabama gets the ball and comes right back down the field into scoring territory themselves. Ninth play of the drive. In fact, it's covered 66 yards in a little over four minutes. Second down and eight. Tide can get a first down at the three. 
McCarron, the fade to the corner. Norwood's got it. Touchdown. Beautiful throw. An excellent catch. And the Crimson Tide come right back and score. You just can't throw the ball any better than this. Single coverage against Will Redmond. Throw this ball to the outside shoulder away from the defense. Even though Redmond was right there and actually had an arm in between Norwood's arms, that ball was perfectly thrown. Second touchdown toss of the night for A.J. McCarron. Cade Foster in for the point after. Up and good. And as Todd said, sign of a great team. A little bit of talking going on. He went five out of six on that drive. 77 yards in nine plays. The capper, 21st touchdown pass of the year for A.J. McCarron. It's set. And there's the battery right there. Quarterback and wide receiver. So now we'll see if Mississippi State can answer again. Remember, if you just joined us, Mississippi State missed a 23-yard field goal that would have tied the game in the first half at 3-3, then gave up a touchdown with 20 seconds left in the second quarter to give Alabama their 10-0 lead at halftime. Battle back to go on a 46-yard drive, and their offensive lineman got them a touchdown. And now let's see what they can do trailing again by 10. Brandon Holloway from the six-yard line. And Holloway out to the 24, maybe the 25-yard line as we check in with Reese. All right, Brad, Sports Center right now, presented by Ally Bank. Baylor and Texas Tech, it's 42-27 in the third. Now Bryce Petty usually pitches it around, runs one in this time. Petty accounted for four touchdowns so far. Texas Tech trying to hang in, still nine and a half to go. So Bryce Petty, one of those guys that People talk about when you think about maybe the top five guys in the Heisman race. And Todd and I and Holly, I think, all agree that that guy, despite not having the same gaudy statistics as some of the others, certainly is in the discussion as well, as he's trying to win his 35th game as a starting quarterback in 37 outings. I like guys that win games. I don't care how many points or how many touchdowns they throw. Tyler Russell now, the senior. His third time playing against Alabama, trying to pull an upset. Has to work from a 10-point deficit. And he'll give it off on a draw play to Josh Robinson. And Robinson got about three as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, cornerback Dion Blow was very upset with all the cowbell ringing. So during that last break when he was over on the bicycle, he asked the athletic trainers for some earplugs. He's getting a little annoyed by all the noise. But I did notice one other way to solve that problem of the cowbells ringing constantly score when Alabama <laughs> scored it got pretty quiet in here it got really quiet in here eerily quiet and of course the cowbells can't ring during plays they can ring all they want during timeouts you can hear a couple occasional ones when you're not supposed to have them you're supposed to ring with discretion and again Robinson trying to pop out of the back of that pile, got two more yards. It'll bring up third down and five. Well, I think one of the reasons you see two runs in a row by Dan Mullen is to, to hopefully give his defense a little rest. You know, they played really well in the first half until the very end. And then that last drive, Alabama took it and went right down the field, ran a lot of plays, took a little steam out of that Bulldog defense, trying to buy him a little time on the bench right now. And again, they find themselves in third down and five. Malcolm Johnson's been the number one receiver for Tyler Russell in this kind of situation tonight. He's the slot man on the left, and Russell rips it to him, complete first down, Mississippi State. Pressure by Alabama, tried to come after Tyler Russell, picked up nicely, and the slant route to a big target. I mean, he's 6'2", 235 pounds, right there on the left slot. That's a big body shielding Geno Smith away from the football. So nice conversion there, and they keep the drive alive at the 41-yard line. Two backs in there are Shumpert and Robinson. And three wide outs to Russell's right. It'll be Robinson, and this time he's got some nice running room following his blockers, and he goes out for seven or eight yards. Boy, that offensive front, you talked about them, and of course they have the touchdown in Sidaway, but Beckwith and Day and Jackson and Plazel, those guys are coming off the ball. 
Well, this is a run first offense. Even though with Tyler Russell tonight, they're throwing it a little more. They knew they had to throw it to have a chance to win. They're a power run football team. And Robinson trying to bounce it outside and somehow kept his balance for the first down. Wow, what a run by the sophomore out of Franklin in Louisiana. Watch the balance on this thing. Little misdirection in the backfield. Supposed to hit inside and it wasn't there. Boy, a nice block coming in there late by Deronya Wilson. Number 81 got a nice block to allow for the first down. Crazy thing about this ledge is Perkins has had trouble staying upright, slipping all over the field, and Robinson's keeping his balance, sticking his foot in the ground, and picking up big yardage. And now the throw's complete to Lewis. And Mississippi State's got a drive moving. And how about the protection? I mean, this was a slow developing play. They faked the screen, looking to throw the ball deep. Watch, they're going to have a wide receiver screen they fake. They want to throw the ball deep. It's not there. And so he comes to his secondary receiver on the sideline. But that took a long time. Excellent protection by that offensive front. Jonathan Allen got a shot on Russell just as he got rid of that football. But he threw another strike. And it's another first down. He's hit his last five passes. Bulldogs just outside the tide. 31. Play fake. Russell. Deep ball down the middle into traffic. And it's intercepted. Ha ha Clinton Dix is bringing it out of the Alabama end zone and he's got a convoy in front of it and a big mistake there just when Mississippi State had things going their way Alabama's got it back they got a flag down again that one had traffic written all over it on yeah. that throw down the middle well, we talked about the safeties on this Alabama team. That is this, really the strength of the back end of the defense. And ha ha Clinton Dix is the best of all of them. And he was in man coverage with Landon Collins coming over the top to help. And Clinton Dix just made a great play on the football. During the return, illegal block in the back on the receiving team, on the intercepting team, correction. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul, first down Alabama. And Tyler Russell hurt on the play as well. So that was a double whammy. Throws an interception. Yeah. He's shaken up. They would have to go to the number three quarterback if he can't play. And now Alabama's got it back on the second interception of the year. Here's Clinton Dix right here, number six. He's going to pick up the receiver in man coverage, a slot receiver, and run with him stride for stride. Jamie Lewis. When he sees the receiver look for the ball, he turns and finds the ball. And that's just... That's just a great player making a great play in man coverage. Third quarterback, though, we expected we might see him at some time tonight. He's warming up, and so is Russell on the other end. But Russell was shaking up trying to make the tackle after that interception. Alabama's got it back after the penalty. The illegal block on the return has it at the eight-yard line. And they've got an eye backfield in there for one of the few times tonight. Play action, McCarron from his own goal line. Got a man open. And it's complete out to O.J. Howard, another one of our impact players. That's a pickup of 20 to the big freshman tight end. Well, that time Mississippi State tried to sneak a safety down late to expect the run. And O.J. Howard runs right past the outside linebacker into an open spot in the defense. Good read by A.J. McCarron seeing that safety come down and throwing the ball over the top. A.J. to O.J., a pickup of 20 out to the 29. The Andrew White in motion. As a tide on a play fake will throw again on first down. And a wide open crossing route to DeAndre White, who is the motion man. And the Crimson Tide picks up 15 more. AJ McCarron's in a rhythm right yeah. now. Well, again, Mississippi State trying to stop the run trying to bring up third down and long and Alabama countering by throwing on early downs on run downs off of play action and getting some open receivers first and ten just outside the 44 TJ Yeldon big gainer again TJ Yeldon down the sideline and then puts a helmet into Nico uh, Nico Whitley before he's knocked out of bounds and that should put him over the thousand yard mark for the season for the second year in a row. Well, watch the right guard, Anthony Steen, number 61, just turns his man around in the hole. 
DeAndre White with a nice block on the perimeter. And this is what Alabama did last week to LSU. They started to flex their muscles. They started to run the football. They started to play better at the line of scrimmage and took control of the football game as we wind down here in the third quarter. A 25-yard pickup, a 50-yarder earlier. And after over 1,100 yards last year, Yeldon's over 1,000 again in this season for Alabama. Jones, only a one-yard gain. Nice job by Zach Jackson to get out there and make the play. So there it is, over 1,000 two years in a row. Last year was 11.08 and 12 touchdowns. Right now, 1,009 and 12 more scores. Yeah. Well, we're getting to Scott Cochran time. The strength and conditioning coach at Alabama who jumps up and down with four fingers in the air the entire fourth quarter. There he is. It's his time to shine. Well, the fourth quarter is at hand. Alabama trying to stay perfect, trying to go to 10-0. They've got a 10-point lead, but we got a lot of ball left in Starkville. Stick around. Fingers up when he does that, too, or you get in trouble. There you yeah. go. There you go. Well, and he does this not just yeah. in between quarters. He does this every play of the fourth quarter. <laughs> well, they start the fourth quarter with a 17-7 lead. And A.J. McCarron coming up firing and going deep. Down the middle, man there, and tipped away beautifully by Nico Whitley at the last moment. Prior to that throw, after the interception, A.J. McCarron had hit 10 of 12. That one was on the mark, but Nico Whitley doing what a free safety is supposed to do and helping the corner coming over the top and getting a hand on the football. And this was well thrown and would have been a touchdown were it not for Whitley. Kenny Bell, the intended receiver. So it brings up third down and nine. And again, the crowd is staying with it here for their Mississippi State team. And so is the sideline. Blitz coming on McCarron. Steps a waiver bit and throws a strike complete to Amari Cooper, and that quiets the crowd. First down. Nice job by the Alabama offensive line picking up the blitz. The five linemen and Yeldon steps right up into the middle, buys a little extra time for McCarron, and another nice throw to the outside to Cooper. You want to throw the outs out. You don't want to throw those back to the inside. Keep it away from the defense where only your man can make the catch. If they're back to the inside, they're going the other way yes. for a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, you're right. At the 20, first down Alabama. And we've got false start on Howard, the tight end, I think. Yeah. False start, number 88, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. He had a big play in that LSU game last week, a 52-yard touchdown catch showing what they hope to see a lot more from him in the future. 6'6", 237-pound freshman. Yeah. Well, and that touchdown was a slant route. It was a short throw, and he ran for the majority of the touchdown. Has great speed, can really get down the middle of the field, and uh, is learning more and more how to block at the point of attack. Never played really much tight end in high school. Not going to be out there on this play after the penalty. First down at 15. Yeldon in trouble and dragged down for a loss. Matthew Wells, nice play by the outside linebacker. Let's check in with Holly. Mississippi State quarterback Tyler Russell has been examined on the sideline. The medical staff told me he's got a bruised right shoulder. That's his throwing arm. He did try to throw a couple of passes on the sidelines. He's grimacing in pain, but guys, he was not in too much pain to put up the four qu fourth quarter, four fingers. He had his arm up in the air. He will return. He's a senior. He's not coming out. Yeah, you see the play he did it on, trying to bring down Ha Ha after that interception that he threw. But he is warming up out there. He's talking to Damian Williams on the sideline. He just wants to get back in the football game. But right now, it's Alabama on the move. Eighth play of this drive. McCarron scans the field. has got all day to think about it. It's a two-man rush. And he's going to run with it now at the last moment, get what he can and get out of bounds around the 18-yard line. That's good coverage. You know, you're dropping nine guys into coverage. You should be able to cover everybody. A.J. bought as much time as he could. You have five blocking against two, but just nobody opened up to throw the football to. And 
Yeah, a lot of maroon jerseys. They're able to find all the intended targets, cover them up, and force A.J. to scramble forward for a few yards. But he got enough to make it a third down and seven. Key play here for Mississippi State's defense. McCarron to the end zone, overshot everybody. It'll bring up fourth down. Kevin Norwood was the intended receiver, but that one just ended up out in the back of the end zone. So the field goal unit will come on. And that means Cade Foster. Made his first one from 33. This one will be from 35. Again, out of an A.J. McCarron hold. Cade Foster from the left hash from 35, and it's right down the middle. So, they add to their lead. Makes it 20 to 7 with 12.15 to go. Todd's taste. A college football prime time presented by Hampton Hotels. A kickoff after Alabama with another drive. Ended up with a Cade Foster field goal of 35 yards, and he's set to kick it away. The Brandon Holloway and Robert Johnson. Going to have to re-tee it, though. A little bit of a breeze. The game certainly hasn't been a breeze for Alabama. They've had their hands full tonight against this Mississippi State team that's a game under 500, but playing like a team that's a lot better than that. And this kick is deep. And out of the back of the end zone. Let's go back and see what Todd had and his taste of the town. Now, I never pass up a great burger, and the Bin 612 burger is one of the best. Black Angus is ground fresh and handmade into patties and grilled, topped with hickory smoked bacon, pepper jack cheese, and a garlic aioli, and it's all served on homemade focaccia bread. Now, I had to cheat on the sides and go for some of the grilled chicken nachos that are ridiculous. Oh, it's on, for real. Come on, get you some. Get you some. Come on in here. Get you some. I got me some. I got me some. You did. You did. We ate well, didn't we? I ate more yesterday. In the last two days, I've eaten more with you than I did the rest of the week, I think. Here's a run up the middle, and that's about three yards. And I'm not kidding when I say that because we had a couple of great meals while we were here in town. But that was that was delicious. That was delicious. As good a burger as I've ever had. And the chicken nachos, they were ridiculous. Yeah, they were. They were we a had a bunch out. of those. And, we, know, had, we had a pizza, too. Yeah, we had a pizza. Yeah. And, and I think between that at lunchtime right. and then the whole crew eating at Little Dewey Friday night, I mean, that was as good of a food day as I've ever had in seven years of doing Taste of the Town. And as big a food day as I've ever had <laughs> in my life. But we did have a whole everybody together last night, and that was a blast as well. Good weekend in Starkville. Good eats. Pot's Taste of the Town, by the way, books available now. You want to maybe get that as a little stocking stuffer. It's a, What's the full name of the book? Taste of the Town. College the, Football's well, a Guided Tour of College Football's Best Places to Eat. There it is. That's it. Mississippi State, Tyler Russell back in there despite being banged around a little bit on that interception where he's trying to make the tackle. And now he comes up and finds himself in a big situation where they desperately need one. 11 and a half to go. It's third down and eight. And he's in an empty backfield right now with five receivers. Here comes up oh, C.J. Mosley back down to the blitz. They don't need a blitz. They get him from behind. And it's Adrian Hubbard with a sack. First sack of the night. And it's a huge one on third down and eight. Well, very similar to what they did to LSU last week. They said, you know what? We're going to play more man. We need to pressure the quarterback. Hubbard in a three-point stance is going to beat the left tackle and get right to the blind side of the quarterback. Blaine Clausell, the left tackle. For the most of the night, the protection has been outstanding for Tyler Russell. That time, it broke down. First time they've gotten to him, and it forces another punt. Swedenberg's kick. And bounce around 
the 47 yard line and it'll be excellent field position for Alabama one number one in the BCS Amari Cooper in motion on first down from the 47 Kenyon Drake back in the backfield and Drake into the secondary and in a hurry man did he shoot through that hole and picked up 20 yards 21 in fact before they can bring him down well he's a little different back than Yeldon he's got more burst right there Anthony Steen is the key guy up there a powerful run blocker he's going to get the key block again excellent blocking by the right tackle as well Austin Shepard and you see those not just the fresh legs but the burst that Drake has Again, we said during Nick Saban's time in Alabama, it's always been two good backs. Yep. And they got two good ones again. Alabama's got 85 yards rushing in the second half. They fake the end around, and McCarron off his back foot throws an interception. So that's Calhoun coming the other way. Calhoun to the 40, to midfield, and all the way down to the 40-yard line. Bulldogs are still in it. Well, he was trying to get the ball to O.J. Howard. And you know how I said a little bit earlier, when you throw outside, you want to throw it out? This one's too far in. And the safety made a play on the ball. Pressure forced A.J. to throw that ball too far to the inside. And Tavez Calhoun, with his second interception of the night, and a big return at the end, puts Mississippi State in Alabama territory. That's a third turnover suffered by Alabama. That's a season high. And here come the Bulldogs at the 38-yard line of Alabama. What Dan Mullen say, we have to play our best and hope they're a little bit off. Three turnovers is a little bit off for Alabama. Damian Williams is in at quarterback for Mississippi State. And he's going to take off on a quarterback draw all the way. But he only got about a yard because Jeff Pagan was waiting for him. Well, you mentioned earlier, we were told that we were going to see Damian Williams regardless tonight. He's a freshman out of Louisiana near New Orleans. Tyler Russell doesn't appear at least that he's coming in anytime soon. Williams more of a dual threat guy. He's a thick, shorter player, but powerfully built. Led his team to a state championship last year as a senior in high school. And again, he's all by himself in the Bulldog backfield. Second down and nine. He's going to throw here over the middle and a little bit behind yep. the receiver Lewis maybe could have had the catch and ha ha Clinton Dix was there defensively. One of the things that makes ha ha Clinton Dix such a great player and a future high draft pick in the NFL is not only his ability to play safety and stop the run and be physical in the run game it's his ability to go up on a slot receiver and play man cover. I mean that is a versatility that the safeties for Alabama have and you don't see that everywhere you look in college football and that goes a long ways in the next level yeah. like you said again five receivers for Williams on third down and nine trying to take advantage of the interception he'll keep it on the ground and I think he got a face mask pulled there I don't see yep. a flag there's a flag late came in late a gift from Alabama if this is CJ Mosley it's the second time he's done that tonight and I got to believe at this point that Tyler Russell is hurt because there's no way I would have expected a true freshman to come in at quarterback after that big turnover. Personal foul, face mask number eight, defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. This one's on Pagan, not on Mosley. Well, he was stopped well short of the first down, but the face mask and the personal foul, which was clear, is going to give Mississippi State a fresh set of downs. Mississippi State, they have one more play like that on Williams' head, and they'll be down to no quarterbacks. Tyler Russell back up. He was crouched down and sitting down over there for a while. Now back on the sideline watching his team with a first and 10 in the red zone at the 19. And Foster's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, Robinson, I beg your pardon. He's still standing up, but it'll be about a yard loss. 
and then he has to come in and try to get a piece of the guys that had him stood up, including Mosley. You know, Mississippi State told Holly uh, it was a bruised shoulder, but when we showed that replay, he didn't hit anything. He reached to try to grab the, the guy who intercepted the pass and kind of jerked his arm. Yep. So uh, hard to tell exactly what's bothering him, but obviously doesn't feel comfortable throwing the football or he would definitely be in there right now. So right now it's Damian Williams show. And the freshman back there with Robinson and Shumpert flanking him in the backfield. This one he gives off to Shumpert, and Shumpert's going to lose another yard. Courtesy of Trey DePriest. Well, Mississippi State sideline calling for another face mask. Huh? I don't know if there was or not, but the, the bottom line is they are locked into this run game with the freshman quarterback in right now and back-to-back -back plays they lose yardage and now a very difficult situation for the young quarterback yeah, I guess we got a timeout right now to Alabama and uh, Derek Williams I think was a guy that was shaken up on the play if I'm Alabama on this third down and long I bring pressure for sure not only is this quarterback a freshman he's only listed as 6 1 he's a much different Physically a much different looking quarterback than Tyler Russell who's six four and can see over the defense a little bit I would try to get pressure inside Right up into the face of Damian Williams if they can Now those are nice numbers in your high school career, but this is the SEC <laughs> This isn't Metairie, Louisiana anymore Third down at 13 Perkins back in for the first time in the tailback spot, now he's going to flush out of the backfield. Damian Williams, pressure coming. He had it thrown over the middle to Lewis. Again, a little bit high and behind him, incomplete. And you see where the pressure came. It came right up the middle. It was a twist game, a stunt. And Hubbard, who is six foot five, came right up the middle, right into the face of the quarterback. And that caused Damian Williams to throw the ball high. And they're going to go for it on fourth down. Thinking Dan Mullen that maybe he won't get his hands on it another time at all. Fourth down and 13. Hey, you're four and five. You're playing the number one team yeah. in the country. You're down 13 points. Let's play ball. You just like to have it in the hands of your senior, not your freshman. Williams flushed forward in the pocket and goes down to the line of scrimmage. Alabama will take over on downs. Again, without a guy that would have played in Prescott and probably started, and then Russell starts, injures himself. You go to your freshman quarterback, and you find yourself with a fourth down and a bunch. And on this play, they don't convert. Our Ford EcoBoost 400 at Homestead, Miami. It's 1 o'clock tomorrow on ESPN. I think Jimmy's just gotten out of hit a wall or finished 23rd or above, huh. something like that. But you never know. Crazy things can happen. So you might want to watch that race. I'm sure all of you will that are NASCAR fans and some of us. Whoa, fumble. Are you kidding me? Drake just put it on the ground. Alabama trying to give it away. To keep Mississippi State in the football game. They can't get over that 13-point hump under Nick Saban. If they get a 14-point lead on you, they're 68 and 1. <laughs> they're stuck on 13. And all of a sudden now, the Bulldogs with the football in Alabama territory again. Kenyon Drake puts it on the ground, and Bernard Rick McKinney, I think, is the guy that recovered it. I'm not sure who ripped it out. A.J. Jefferson, maybe, number 47. Got a right hand in there and pulled it out. Well, here's a gift. Let's see if they can take advantage. And again, freshman quarterback playing. Alabama teammates trying to control Kenyon Drake over there. And the Bulldogs with the ball at the 25-yard line, 24-yard line, in fact. Perkins trying to take it wide. Mosley's going to track him down and run him out 
after no gain on the play as we check in with Holly. Guys, I was able to confirm on the sideline that Tyler Russell's shoulder injury is causing him to not have enough strength when he's throwing the ball. He just doesn't feel like he has enough zip behind the ball. He told Dan Mullen about it, so Dan's going with the freshman in the last two series because Tyler Russell just doesn't feel like he's able to throw like they'll need him to in this situation. There was the play again on the interception that Clinton Dix had and trying to make a tackle and force him out of bounds and appears to be the play where he injured himself. Well, only he knows how bad that hurts, but it must hurt really bad to not be in the game right now. Perkins, oh man, did he take a shot from Mosley at the end of that run? That guy's a hitter. Captain of the defense, All American Butkus finalist last year. CJ Mosley is not as big as your normal inside linebackers in the Alabama defense, but he is fast and he's instinctive. And he makes a ton of plays. Well, it's two down territory again here on third down and eight. You know, if they hit that first field goal and then hit the field goal on the last drive, <laughs> we'd be talking about a different situation right now as far as points needed. Williams over the middle, and at this one Lewis should have had. Yep. In and out of his hands, incomplete. Yeah, the series before, he threw that pass behind his intended receiver, and it was knocked away. This one was well thrown in front of the receiver Lewis and Lewis wasn't able to snatch it. And again you never know with the way Alabama has been putting the ball on the ground and throwing interceptions they might be down to one more play for Mississippi State. So you've got a timeout here with 521 remaining. And we got more football coming up on Monday night. This will be a really good football game on Monday night football. Tom Brady and the Patriots on the road taking on Cam Newton and the Panthers, who all of a sudden are a force in the NFC. Coverage starts with Monday night countdown at 6.30. Patriots and the Panthers, 8.25 ESPN, and live on Watch ESPN. And the numbers on the year for Tom Brady and Cam Newton. Both Cam playing a little more under control this year. Tom Brady not having the kind of statistical year, but hey, it's still the Patriots, it's still Tom Brady. Yeah. This might be the last play offensively for Mississippi State if they can't keep this going on fourth down and eights. Well, two times deep in Alabama territory. So far, nothing to show for. Damian Williams, empty backfield. Now Mosley changing things up. Look at the defense of Alabama shifting. Williams looking left the whole time. And oh. another pass that should have been caught by Naronia Wilson. Incomplete. And Alabama takes over again. Well, you can't blame the freshman quarterback. Two plays in a row, he did his job. And he didn't get enough help from his wide receivers. Jamie and Lewis on third down. And Deronye Wilson on fourth down, thrown perfectly. Not only should have been caught, would have been a bull. And the recovery, they had a shot there, got to the 22, should have been a touchdown pass. And Alabama takes over on downs again. That's an offer deep in Alabama territory for the night. Not good. Not the way you're going to beat a number one team anyway. No, absolutely not. Yeldon back in there after Drake put it on the carpet, and he takes it for about three yards. Smartly stays in bounds as well, not only against the number one team, but one of the best defenses in the country, yeah. too. Leading the nation in scoring defense, you get opportunities, you have to capitalize. You don't maybe have to capitalize four for four, but you better do at least half of them, come away with some points. And uh, tough to win a game like that against a really good team. And had they made that one field goal, the short one early in the ball game. As I mentioned, the whole score differential would be different, or they could have kicked more field goals in this second half and still been right in the thick of the game. As it is, they're down two scores, and Alabama is now just going to try to grind it out here in the last four and a half minutes as we take a look at the Vizio BCS standings. Alabama, if they hang on here, will be 10 0. Florida State, a route over Syracuse today. And those two are on a collision course unless something goes haywire. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people will begin an argument tonight about style points with Alabama and what this win looked like and a little sloppy with the turnovers. 
I'm not a I'm not a fan of the whole style points argument. I believe that you have to be able to win some games when you don't play your best, when you when you don't have everything going, and uh, that's the kind of win that Alabama is moving towards tonight. I just just don't really go for that idea of trying to score a bunch of points and make a win look better than it maybe really was. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad Stanford and USC. Stanford would like to just get out of there with a win tied at 17, third and goal. Ill-advised. Kevin Hogan is picked off by Deion Bailey and the Trojans snuff out a scoring threat. And on ABC, under eight minutes to go, number four is tied up with Coach O's team. All right, Reese here. It's 20 to 7. And it's kind of like what Alabama's trying to do. Just get out of Starkville with their 10th win of the year. Second down and 11. A.J. McCarron under center with Yellen behind him. D.J. is going to get the call again and again. They're going to bottle him up and drop him for a loss. You know, I was thinking about this today. Ed Orgeron, people around here familiar with him. Of course, he was the head yep. coach at Ole Miss for a while. I don't know if he's going to get that job at, at, at USC. Probably a long shot to get it. Whoever does get that job, I think, would be pretty wise to make a strong charge, run at trying to keep Ed there State. as a defensive coordinator and recruiting guy, pay him a lot of money, because he has been really good for USC when he took over for Lane Kiffin. And I think the players really think highly of it. That's good on the field, Holly. Well, A.J. McCarron has had to fight through some adversity tonight, and he told us one of the things he has improved the most this season is his leadership. Well, our microphones actually picked up him in that first quarter when things were not going well, and here's what he said. You guys are just standing around looking at each other like rocks. This is just another Saturday. We're the number one team in the country for a reason. Now let's go out and act like it. I believe the rocks picked up some momentum. They became boulders as T.J. Yeldon started running the ball. And, guys, he got on his guys hard in that first quarter, but it's paid off late in the fourth. And he backed it up with the way he played, Holly. And, Holly, I really love the way you cleaned up that speech, yeah. by the way. Did that well. We heard that during the timeout. And A.J. with two touchdown passes tonight. One to Vogler. That got it to 10 to nothing. And then his second one was a beauty. Norwood going up high in the air and bringing it down on the fade. And that's where we are, 20 to 7. Third down and 13. And it's going to be a draw play to Yeldon. He won't get the first down, but he does chew up a little bit more clock. We're under three minutes. We talked coming in on the top of the show tonight that he's got a resume that uh, is second to none as far as winning football games. If he holds on to this one, it's 35-2. and two, And you can't do any better than that, really. He's going to be the winningest quarterback in Alabama history, one of the winningest quarterbacks ever in college football history and while that may not be what everybody's looking for statistically it's certainly what you look for when you're trying to win rings and so we'll have to wait and see you know the Heisman voting doesn't get done until I don't I don't vote with yeah. my vote until after championship yeah, weekend, that last Saturday of the regular season and the championship yeah. game so I kind of wait and to the last minute you know and when we talked to him when we asked him how important it is it to you to be in that conversation to possibly get invited to New York and you know he said all the right things and I think he was sincere I mean he's most focused and interested on trying to lead his team to another championship but would be incredibly honored to go to New York right. and to be a part of that. And I think he deserves that. I really do. You know, obviously it's not a career achievement award uh, and his numbers are spectacular and his touchdowns are down this year compared to in the past, but he still is playing at a very high level for this football team. There's another mistake on punt return by Jamie and Lewis tonight. He just can't seem to find the handle or the football or field them before they go down to the three yard line and a 61 yard punt drops dead at the three and that's not a good spot to try to come from a 13 point deficit. You can get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN. You know the curse of Babe Ruth. How about the curse of Bobby Lane? Lions have been under it for 55 years. Matt Stafford and Megatron are trying to change that. We'll talk about it with Boomer and the gang at 10 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock on ESPN2, Fantasy Football Now. Experts give you all the news you need to know to set up your teams. That's on ESPN and ESPN2 tomorrow morning. Well, it was a heck of a show by the Mississippi State defense tonight. Only 242 remaining, and unless they have some magic here in their offense, 97 yards worth of territory to cover, and they're out of timeouts. 
It's going to be a four and six Mississippi State team that's going to be disappointed in not taking advantage of the opportunities that Alabama gave them tonight. Damian Williams set up in his own end zone. And he's going to keep it straight out to the 10 yard line. Seven yard pickup. Well, Dan Mullen told us yesterday, I mean, their focus right now is to try to find a way to win two of their last three games. Doesn't look like tonight's going to come through in that way. They go to Arkansas next week and then finish on Thanksgiving night at home against Ole Miss to try to get bowl eligible winning the last two. And again, Perkins slips, trying to make a cut. No gain. Meanwhile, Alabama has a game against Chattanooga, and then the Iron Bowl in yeah. two weeks is uh, shaping up to be one heck of a football game. Well, I know the guys after the game will show you if you miss the end of the Auburn-Georgia game, unbelievable. It will go down as one of the most famous plays, I'm sure, in Auburn football history. And one of the most boneheaded plays in Georgia football history. Yeah, the two guys, double coverage and chose to try to intercept the ball instead of knock it down. But you'll see that highlight later if you haven't seen it already. Williams goes down here, sacked back at the five-yard line by Ajon Robinson. And the hope is going out the window right now for Mississippi State. They had their chances tonight for sure. This will be the 15th straight loss to a ranked team by Mississippi State. And they were one and four against number one teams coming into this. And Alabama was the number one team four of those times. Florida was the other one. And that one win was 1980 as we showed you that flashback. Here's Williams in the end zone trying to get rid of it. He did get it across the line of scrimmage and There's out of no bounds. For intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the tackle box. Incomplete pass. The ball goes over on downs. First down Alabama. So Alabama with 58 seconds remaining. Well, the most storied conference in college athletics is right where we are right now as you see all the logos for the SEC network launching in 2014. For more info, go to www.getsecnetwork.com. This has been the SEC on ESPN tonight in the final minutes. And now A.J. McCarron can go out with a smile on his face and take a knee. Yeah. You know, and again, that's that's probably what Nick Saban is thinking, too. And I don't care about style points either. We expected a tough football game coming in here. We knew that uh, Mississippi State played us tough at home. They're coming off the big win against LSU. Let's take a knee and let's get out of here and get back on the road to Tuscaloosa. There's the knee. Well, this is our third Alabama game. We won't see him again, we don't think. And uh, they did give up seven yeah. points tonight. So after 12 quarters of football, up. they're going to have to clean that up. Career high night for T.J. Yeldon as he went over the 1,000-yard mark for the second straight season. 159 tonight, including a 50-yard run that set him up for a touchdown that gave them a lead that they would not relinquish. So hard-fought game. A lot of respect between the two teams, even though they've had a few pushing and shoving matches over the course of the game. Uh, it was a tough one all the way around. Mississippi State's defense played very well. Their offensive line played very well. Their quarterback didn't finish the game, and that didn't help the cause. And Alabama may not be a perfect 10, but they are 10 and 0. It wasn't perfect tonight, but the season has been. Don't forget, Sports Center's coming up next. 20 to 7 is the final. It's going to wrap it up for Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, Brad Nestler saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN, worldwide leader in sports. And Sports Center is coming up in 15 seconds.